Hello everyone. Today we will be covering a practical investigation of cathode ray tubes and taking a look at some of the results and conclusions that can be drawn from this investigation. Now this investigation uses four different configurations of cathode ray tubes to demonstrate their properties. It uses one cathode ray tube containing a Maltese cross, one containing a pair of electric plates, one containing a fluorescent screen display, and finally, one containing a glass wheel. First, we have the Maltese cross tube. Now, the Maltese cross tube has an anode mounted on the base of the tube underneath the cross. The cross is simply a piece of metal that's been stuck up in the middle of the tube in the shape of a Maltese cross. Now, when cathode rays travel from the cathode, they are blocked by the Maltese cross and can't reach the other end. This means that there is a shadow cast by the cathode ray tubes on the end of the screen, which can be seen in this picture. So this shows that the cathode rays can be blocked by metal fairly easily. The shadow formed by the cross has a very sharp edge. This means that there's no diffraction going on, which might be expected if cathode rays were made of waves. Therefore, we can say from this experiment that it seems to support the idea that cathode rays are not made of waves. Finally, the experiment indicates that the rays travel in straight lines. They don't naturally bend or distort. The second configuration of the cathode ray tube is the paddle wheel. When a glass paddle wheel is mounted inside the tube, the cathode rays cause the paddle wheel to rotate. Now the paddle wheel rolls away from the cathode, and this seems to indicate that the cathode rays are coming from the cathode and traveling to the anode. Next we have a cathode ray tube with two electric uh, two parallel plates set up inside, creating an electric field. Now when the uh, parallel plates are turned on, they tend to bend the cathode ray, showing that the cathode ray must be electrically charged. By looking at the direction that the beam moves, i.e. toward the positive plate, we can determine that it must be negatively charged. Finally, we have a cathode ray tube bent by a magnetic field with a fluorescent screen display that allows us to see this distortion. This confirms that the beam is electrically charged, because only electrically charged objects can be distorted by magnetic fields. Using the right-hand palm rule, we can determine the charge on the cathode rays that they must have if they are deflected in this direction by the magnetic field. And in fact, we can confirm that the cathode ray is negatively charged. This concludes the theory. We have covered four different configurations of cathode ray tubes and the results that they produce experimentally. Now let's go on to some questions. Question 9. The debate as to whether cathode rays are charged particles or electromagnetic waves was continued for many years. Which observation was it that resolved the debate? Um, was it, say, part C, cathode rays can penetrate thin metal foil? This suggests that cathode rays are waves, and we know that's not the case because they're made of electrons. Could it be D? Fluorescent screens glow when struck by cathode rays. This indicates that the cathode rays uh, carry energy, but this is supported by both the wave theory and the particle theory, so it's not really definitive proof. Could it be A then, cathode rays can turn a paddle wheel? While this does initially seem like proof that cathode rays have momentum and must be particles, the wave theorists determined that the paddle was actually just heating up and this caused it to rotate, and that it wasn't due to a transfer of momentum at all. The last option is B, an electric field that can deflect cathode rays. And in fact, B is the right answer because this was definitive proof that the rays had electric charge. Question 10. What properties of cathode rays was the best demonstrated in the Maltese cross tube? Alright, let's take a look at A, their wave nature. The cathode ray produces a sharp shadow on the edge of the Maltese cross. If it were made of waves, then surely it would produce some diffraction. And so the Maltese cross doesn't very easily demonstrate their wave nature. Could it be part C, then they have a negative charge? Well, the Maltese cross suggests that the cathode rays are coming from the cathode, because that's where they cast the shadow from. But this doesn't really prove that they're negatively charged, like the cathode is. Could it be then part B? After all, the particles cause fluorescence when they hit the screen, and that means that they carry energy. And while this is supported, it's also supported by every other cathode ray tubes. There's nothing special about the Maltese cross tube that demonstrates that the cathode rays carry energy. The final option is D, they travel in straight lines. 
And because of the sharp shadow caused by the Maltese cross, we find that this is one of the best properties of cathode rays to demonstrate with a Maltese cross tube. Question 11. In the mid-1800s, scientists were unable to deflect cathode rays with electric fields. This was particularly confusing. Why? Well, the reason is because the, uh, the cathode rays were reflected by magnetic fields, but not electric fields. The deflection by magnetic fields seemed to prove that they were electrically charged, but the lack of deflections by electric fields seemed to prove that they were not. So these two experiments seemed to contradict each other. And in fact, of course, the electric field was later found to deflect the cathode rays. Question 12. Describe an experiment to determine whether cathode rays are emitted from the cathode or the anode without putting any objects inside the cathode ray tube. Now, two of the tubes covered in the practical investigation uh, show that they must come from the cathode. The Maltese cross tube casts a shadow from the cathode, which seems to indicate that the rays are coming from the cathode. But if we can't put a Maltese cross inside, then we can't use the Maltese cross tube. Could we use the paddle wheel then? The paddle wheel rotates in a direction. That means that they must be coming from the cathode ray tube. But once again, that necessitates putting something inside the cathode ray tube. So we're going to have to do something a little more difficult. We're going to have to change the shape of the cathode ray tube. If we create a cathode ray tube in an L shape like this, then if the cathode rays are coming from the cathode, it will produce a green glow here, which we see. If they were coming from the anode, they would produce a green glow on the top of the tube, which is not observed. And so an experiment like this can prove that cathode rays are in fact emitted from the cathode. This concludes the section. We have covered an investigation of cathode rays, including four different cathode ray tubes used to demonstrate the properties of them.